the interest rates are continuing to rise. We're starting to see more supply on the market. Is it still a good time to sell your Southern Utah home? Should you be buying right now? Should you be waiting for a better deal? Will this market crash? We will talk about all of that in this video. Folks, Nick and Michonne Rostopchin here. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. We're so excited to have you. If you're new around here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell right next to it because that is the only way that I know of for certain for you to stay up to date on all things Southern Utah and all things real estate. We are so excited to hear from all of our viewers. If you're even remotely considering relocating to Southern Utah or selling your Southern Utah home and have some questions, please reach out to us. Our contact information is all over this channel. Call us, text us, DM us, email us, whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. Whatever, we are, we are whatever always you want to get in touch. We're always available any, any time. Um, but anyway, let's just dive into it. How's the market? So the market is definitely shifting and changing, and um, I kind of feel like that we're not quite at the peak anymore. I feel like we're starting to see, you know, we're starting to see more listings hit the market, which so that you know there's not as much as a supply versus demand issue. So we're seeing more. So just, we just ran the numbers yesterday, right? And it was we were like six hundred. We were at a, yeah, we were at a, a total of 610 listings on our market yesterday, and I just ran them again today, and we're at a total of 643. So, I so, mean, it's Memorial Day weekend. Um, I feel like a lot of sellers are kind of waiting around those events when maybe more people will be in the area, but nonetheless, we haven't seen you know 30 listings hit the market just overnight, and yeah. that just happened. Another interesting thing. <clears throat> is we're starting to see some price reductions. We looked at how cheap yesterday, and it was over 30 price reductions. So that's that's kind of wild. So, what would you say as as a buyer? Like, what what do you think should the buyers do right now? So, to me, it's always best to buy with a lowest the lowest interest rate possible. And, I mean, also, you know, the mentality of buyers is, you know, the the longer they see listings sit on the market the more they start to wonder if, you know, they can possibly get a better deal. So that's a note for sellers. Kind of a little below asking. Yeah. So note to sellers, you definitely want to price your home just right so that it doesn't sit on the market and buyers don't try to lowball. So um, let's go ahead. We pulled up this mortgage calculator and I'm more of a, you know, numbers and visual. So our median sale price as of April this year is 610,000. So we went ahead and put in on this mortgage calculator, 610,000 and say you have 20% to put down. Our current interest rate right now is 5.07. That gives you a total monthly payment of 2,640. Let's say the, the market dropped a little bit. Let's say it went down to 590,000. If we saw an adjustment. Yeah, yeah. if we saw an adjustment, still put 20% down and interest rate hiked up a little bit to 6%. That's 2829 for your total monthly payment. So, so that's what that's about it's about 180 bucks, $185 more. Yeah. So So it's really not a better deal. There's a there's a famous saying, I'm not sure who said it, but it's a great saying, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. And I think that that concept stands true. Another reason why that concept may work is, let's say, and I, I don't anticipate that these high interest rates are sustainable. You know, nobody anticipated that the low interest rates were sustainable either. Right now, the Fed is trying to do whatever they can to slow down the economy to limit the money and credit supply. And eventually, they're going to have to reintroduce these lower rates. Whether it will happen in the next few months, probably not. But I feel like within the next year, we should probably see some lower interest rates because they're going to have to re-stimulate the economy again to, to get it back up to speed. That's just my predictions without holding the crystal ball. So even if you got locked in on something right now, the payment makes sense. It's a rational purchase. I would say you're better off buying something right now rather than waiting for things to crash. Unless, of course, you're, you're sitting on a bag of cash 
Yeah, but, well, then it doesn't matter. You know, well, it kind of does because oh, <laughs> rate yeah. of inflation right now, truthful rate of inflation, I would say is probably closer to 30%. So if you're sitting on a bag of cash and you're able to use that cash in such a way that you're, you're hedged against inflation, you're probably still better off using large portion of that cash as a down payment and then putting it into a hard asset rather than sitting on it. So even if you're sitting on a ton of cash, I personally don't foresee things going on such a major sale that, you know, a lot of people are comparing this time to 2008 and they're saying, you know, things are going to crash, the sky is falling, we're going to start to see these crazy deals on real estate. My personal opinion, and I know of this because we work with a lot of clients that are considering building in southern Utah and they're building new homes, well, raw cost of construction has increased drastically because of cost of materials, cost of labor, cost of fuel, all of these things are driving your average cost to build above $200 per square foot. So that's kind of your, you know, your floor is pretty close. Yeah, sure, things may soften. And if you're sitting on a pile of cash, you might get a better opportunity sometime soon. But I don't think we're going to see those prices from the past. Speaking of new construction, if you are interested in new construction, we do work with a number of preferred lenders that have new programs right now where they can lock your interest rate for up to 12 months. And the reason I'm just bringing that up is because I have a cousin that literally just got done building um, a new build, took about eight or nine months. And in that time, his payment went up by $1,000. They were not expecting the interest rates to hike that high. But I mean, that would be pretty devastating to find out by the time your your home is done that your payment just went up. So essentially, um, what Michonne is talking about is you can, with the number of lenders that we work with, you can lock your rate. Like if you're, if you're considering building a new home, it's a process that could take anywhere from seven to nine months. If, if all the selections are available, there's no delays. You're not waiting for anything. Typically, about nine months, and is like the most. You would is about the most in Southern Utah with yeah. most of the builders that we work with. So. If that's something you're considering, but you're afraid of committing to it because you're not sure if you're still able to afford this new build after the interest rates jump by another point or two, um, it's, it's a wise thing to be conservative. Yeah, because then you can lock for 12 months. And hey, if for some reason they the interest rates went down and they got better, then you just relock and you're, you're So good. that lock is kind of your worst case scenario. Like yeah. if you lock at, let's say, five and a quarter percent right now, and nine months from now, the rates drop back to 3%, you can just drop that lock and relock at the current rate. But I, I would say that would be absolutely crazy, but it's we, anything is possible. Anything's possible <laughs> right now. But at the same time, if the rates are at 11%, you're still locked in at your five and a quarter, and you're still able to follow through with that purchase. And and everybody's happy. Uh, now, one other thing that I was going to cover here is following that same concept. A lot of people have received their pre-approval letters from their preferred lenders, you know, maybe a few months ago. And if you received a pre-approval, and let's say your pre-approval is up to whatever amount, like say seven hundred and fifty thousand at three percent. What that means to you now at 5% is that you have probably lost about a hundred grand of your purchasing power. So word of advice, on a lot of our listings, whenever we receive multiple offers, we reach out to every lender. And that's something that every good listing agent should do to protect the seller because you don't want to enter a contract with somebody that's not ultimately not able to perform. So unless you got a full approval and you know exactly what you're able to purchase, I would not recommend wasting your time or wasting the seller's time making an offer uh, without knowing that you're able to follow through with it. That's something that you can afford. So would highly recommend getting in touch with the lender, going through a full approval, submitting all of your financials, and anybody, literally anybody could go to Rocket Mortgage or any of those online lenders and get an instant pre-approval without running their credit or understanding the full financial situation. There's a number of lenders that we love and trust that we would recommend based on your personality, based on your financial needs, different lenders have different programs reach out to us. We'd yeah. love to help you get the ball rolling, get you paired with the right lender so that you can be effective in this market so that you don't have to you know, wait for the market to change even more and where you're sure you might see better prices like we just discussed, but affordability certainly goes down. Um, oh, we didn't even cover the numbers 
Oh yeah, let's take a look and see how our real estate market did in April. Now, it's almost the end of uh, May now, it's the 27th today, but this should give us a good reference point. So as of April, and this is where we're, we were getting our median sell price is 610,000. And right now, I mean, I would say a month or two ago, homes were flying off the market after a couple days. They're starting to sit on the market a little, little over a week now. And let's see, in the month of April, we had a total of 404 home, um, homes that sold. That's an 18.2 decrease from last year, April. So dropped by 18% from last April. Mm -hmm. And we had a total of 383 homes that went under contract, and that is a 12.4 decrease compared to last year. And looks like we had a total of 534 active listings on the market, and that is a 61.8 increase from last year. So we're up by almost 60% in total active listings, which means that, you know, the properties that get overpriced or that have uh, any kind of issues, something that's not perfect, because you have to keep in mind, the buyers are becoming very cautious and the buyers are starting to really look at things like, look, is it is it something that I'm going to regret buying? Can I afford to do it? Because so many buyers with the new financing guidelines and increased interest rates, they're just stretched. So if you're putting a home on the market that may have some issues, some projects, some things that are left to finish, those properties need to be priced accordingly. The times of putting just about anything on the market, throwing it at the wall and seeing if it sticks is not the best time to do that as a seller right now no we're, we're just not in that market anymore um we're seeing a lot more listings hit the market and um a lot of sellers are the lot of sellers are still optimistic yeah and we've we've gone uh we've talked to a number of sellers that say you know well my neighbor's house up the street is listed for a ridiculous amount of money now folks when you if you're thinking about selling your Southern Utah home and you go into, uh, you know, you, you should you should absolutely consider interviewing a couple of agents just to see who is going to match your style, match your personality best, who is going to market your property best and get you the bottom line. Now, there's one number that a lot of sellers get kind of misled by, and some agents will promise you the highest listing number. And in this particular market, what that could mean is that that could mean the lowest net because typically the ones that get you excited about the highest list price are usually also the first ones to come back to you and ask for a price reduction. Wouldn't you rather price your property correctly to begin with so you don't have to look at it set on the market and potentially, you know, nothing is for certain right now and things tend to change literally overnight. So if you see your home set on the market, the interest rates continue to go up and now you have to go through an even more aggressive price reduction so your total net is even lower well and keep in mind that buyer's mentality the longer they see that your home sit on the market the more they're wondering what's wrong with this home um what kind of deal can i get it's sat on the market for this yeah. long you know and in today's market we're talking like 14 days we're not even talking a few months yeah like a lot of our buyers if they see a property sit on the market they'll, they'll call me and they'll say hey nick this this home sat on the market for 16 days what's wrong with it yeah well, and we just, um, we're starting to see price reductions. Like that's kind of been a thing of the past. We haven't really been seeing those, but we just ran the hot sheets yesterday and we've seen like 30 over, price reductions. Over 30, 34 price reductions. And that's, that's kind of a thing of the past, but a lot of sellers that listed pretty aggressively are starting to top down sell. And it's, it's not entirely a wrong approach. The first number that comes out of your mouth is the highest number that a potential buyer could agree to. Like you can't backtrack unless you've got multiple offers. So going back to my original point, if you price your property in line with what things are actually selling for, or maybe slightly below, it's a great way for you as a seller to get top dollar. And if you're looking for more advice on how to sell your home, or if you'd like to find out what your St. George or Washington County home is worth, I will put a link in the description below this video. You could fill out your information and completely obligation free. We'll provide you with a CMA. And if, if it's a relationship that may work, would absolutely love to take care of you. Um, we know for certain there's nobody that could market your property better than our team. 100%. So reach out to us. 
we would absolutely love to help you with any of your Southern Utah real estate needs. Now, another question that we get asked often is, is the crash coming? Is, is it going to happen and should you wait? With, with my broken crystal, crystal ball and my understanding of this market, um, I think number one rule of real estate is location, of course. And what we're seeing with a lot of our Southern Utah clients is they're coming in with a decent amount of equity. They're selling homes in other markets. They're coming in here, or maybe they're even selling their Southern Utah homes and they're just upgrading. Uh, a lot of our clients are putting 30 to 50% down, which gives them a pretty decent insulation against future adjustments. And, you know, if, if you don't sell, you don't lose when, when things go down at that point. So I think areas that are sought after, like Southern Utah, people move here from all over the place and they reach out to us and we absolutely love hearing from our viewers. And I feel that the demand plus the right purchases are going to sustain certain markets, but other markets where people don't necessarily want to be or have to be uh, that saw this crazy inflation are, are definitely going to see a much harder hit. But at the same time, cost of new construction between the cost of fuel, labor, and materials, I don't think it's very possible to build a home just about anywhere in the States for much less than $200 per square foot. Like That's kind of the raw costs here in Southern Utah. So when you factor that in, it gives you kind of that floor um, insulation in terms of you know how low could things possibly go. Because if it costs that much to build a new home, I don't think that many people would be listing their homes below that. But yeah. that is my honest opinion of this market. Let us know what you guys think. Are things going to crash? Where would you put everything on black? What would you bat on? Drop us your comment below this video. We'd like to know what you guys think. What are you seeing in your market? Are there any real estate agents from outside of this area? Drop us a comment below. What what? What sort of trends are you guys seeing? I feel like a lot of these things are pretty uniform. Yeah. And if you guys haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And please give us a like and please reach out to us. We are available. We are always available. Call us, text us, email us, reach out to us. We would absolutely love to help you. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.